Okay, so I'm going to try and do the same thing now, but instead I'm going to do it with a, a plane so we can see what it looks like on an actual surface. So I'm just going to import a model. I've actually got, yeah, let's just grab this. So this is a plane which is set to zero to one um, and it's the wrong way at the moment. Let's... So I'm going to create a new camera. Uh, that way this camera that I've got, none of the effects that I've had of that will from that will affect what we're doing now. Obviously I've still got the render settings and things from before, but the camera settings where we did all the kind of post-production stuff won't be attached to this camera because that's on a per camera basis. So this is my plane cam. Um, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Rotate, rotate that so it's at zero. There we go. So we've got a plane. I'm going to apply this material to it. Um, I've switched the tessellation off it for now. Uh, let's put a bit back on. So there's our plane doing its thing. I've still got these lights. I'm going to maybe get rid of these lights and start again with those. Uh, so we've just got our sky. Now, this by itself is probably not going to be that helpful because um, it's it's really obvious it's just a plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my tiling um, and I'm going to increase the tiling uh, by quite a bit, maybe 10. Um, I'm going to reduce the scale of the displacement. But the idea is that when I capture this, like almost like a snapshot of it, I'm actually getting the just you know not it, it has no edges so if I just set this to say frame so I can actually see where the edges of my render are going to be then I know that if I take so something if I go for something like that I don't want the tail to be too obvious either then that's probably going to work okay for what I need so if we push the scale of that a bit more, so I'm going to go for something maybe like that, where that light is starting to come through. And again, I can use these offsets to kind of figure out what it is I should be doing with that. Um, so if I'm kind of generally happy with how that's going to work, then um, I can start off by doing the same kind of thing. I've got sky. If I drop a drop a light in it where you know around here somewhere that might work quite well then so look at the skylight I'm gonna click this contact refinement and it should just do a better job of dealing with some of that stuff Beauty of using skylight, the the directional lights, the skylights as they call them here. These directional lights for this is just that you can move them round, um, and something like that. The um, they don't, you know, you can move these round, but because of directional lights, that doesn't have any effect on them. I mean, you could drop spotlights and stuff in. So, say I wanted to create a light here, you know, an actual spotlight. I could drop one of those in. I move it round into position um, and do what I want with it but I think for the purpose of trying to do this kind of stuff it's easier actually to not. Uh, so if I want to have one over here somewhere doing something uh, like a blue light coming in from here I'll use this and let's move him over here so I can edit him. So I'm going to do the same trick as before where I take the two lights and I take them outside of the sky and then I can maybe do more interesting things with the sky, although where it was was quite interesting, so I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so this is quite 
flat at the minute but what I'm hoping to do is with the uh, now with my plain camera I can start to do some more interesting things so if we have depth of field on and I hit that then we can start to get an area of focus and I can start to pull my mirror back a bit and then the far in a bit as well Okay, so this is quite boring to watch because I'm just fanning about. But so now I've got that kind of roughly there. I'm just going to go back in and have a look at these lights and just see that they we brighten this one up a little bit more, so we get a bit more from it. Maybe just pull this back a bit so it's a cooler light. Um, the other light. play with these curves so RGB overall more range and red Bit warmer up there Bit cooler down at the bottom there we go and sharpen it up a bit, get a bit of bloom in this time, pull the size back so that it's only hitting that bit up in the top corner more than anywhere else, pull the vignette in this time, go for a vignette colour, it's more towards green maybe, or yellow, yeah so it's warmer in tone, Go. Bit of grain maybe. No. A bit more. So yeah, so there you go. So from going for something that's quite quite boring, um, that's maybe a little bit more interesting. Maybe just try and push the displacement a little bit more before it totally breaks. Shadows. Yeah, that kind of works. So, maybe some final tweaks. Just check that our, we're happy with the way that this moving's working across those surfaces. And just go into our occlusion, make sure we're happy with our occlusion. And yeah, there we go. So, we just do follow the same rule as before. I'll just check I'm happy with this guy actually camera anymore than that. It's probably a bit nicer. The brightness of that down a bit. Yeah, okay. So same as before, we just need to capture it because all the settings are the same. So image open. And there we go. So there's our flat version of our material. Uh, if I go to potato shop and again Sharpen, unsharp mask. You can just use it to just pull out a little bit more detail. So we're happy with it. Yeah, okay, and there we go. And obviously, you can still go in and you could edit these things as well yourself. Um, and obviously, these are very two different looks. So there's the same material. You've got this, which is kind of maybe a bit more realistic, driven, realistically driven. And this is kind of pushing this more towards a stylized thing. So it shows you can do quite a bit in Marmoset to try and sort of craft a look for all your material. Um, you wouldn't put these two together necessarily um, because, you know, they don't really fit. So if you're kind of doing this, I would sort of 
try and work within the same realms, maybe keep the same lights and edit them. Um, I just wanted to show you two different ways of doing it. So yeah, so here's a, this is the, the flat version and this is the sphere version.